Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the electrical conductivity of metals. So we have studied about the basics of free electron model. So though a metal is a crystalline, crystalline it has got uh, many properties uh, like electrical, thermal, specific heat etc. which are majorly determined by the free electrons. So this uh, we consider the free electrons as uh, electrons which are free to move around inside the metal except at the metal boundary. So this is kind of an electron gas which is more uh, related to the ideal gas except that this gas will uh, uh, th that will satisfy the Pauli's exclusion principle so that the distribution will be based on Fermi direct distribution statistics whereas in ideal gas it obeys Maxwell's Boltzmann distribution functions. So now uh, we will study the electrical uh, properties of this uh, material uh, metallic compounds. So uh, metals we know that metals are very good conductors so we uh, let us consider a uh, behavior of a single electron of electronic charge minus c and mass m so let us consider what happens to this single electron on application of an electric field so here we are considering a purely classical law that is uh, drude theory of electrical conductivity so in the absence of an electric field uh, electrons uh, we know that the electrons are moving uh, the electrons are freely moving inside the metals within the boundary of the metal but the net velocity will be zero because it is the random motions in the absence of an electric field since velocity v is equal to zero the current density j is equal to a, a charge into velocity so minus e into v that will be zero because velocity is zero now we consider the application of an electric field E so that there is a drift of electrons. This is, this is like initially the electrons were having a random motions and on application of the electric field it has got a directionality. So it will be drifting towards, uh, it will be the di in opposite direction to the electric field. So it will be drifted towards one direction. So according to the Newton's law, we can write this uh, MA that is M dV dVd by dt is equal to charge into electric field where uh, this velocity Vd is called the drift velocity. From this equation we can uh, uh, take the integral so that we will get the drift velocity value that is this term minus E et by m plus there is a uh, constant integration constant that is the initial velocity but we know that the initial velocity is zero because in the absence of electric field the velocity is zero so we can neglect the uh, that constant so that this is the value of drift velocity and the current density will be charge into velocity that is minus e into drift velocity that will be e square times e by m into t so from this formula we can say that the current build up as time passes so that the current is increasing monotonically with time so this is uh, like current uh, if you applied a finite electric field after some time oh, after uh, some times the current is increasing so it keeps on increasing so you can go to infinite value but we know that this is not going to happen so there will be always a finer current when we applied a finite electric field so that means we are missing something here so that is uh, because we didn't consider other effects like scattering of electrons uh, so we need to consider that also there are defects such as imperfections inside the crystals there are grain boundaries there are positive ions uh, and this uh, there are also impurities these are this can cause scattering scattering of the electrons drifted electrons so uh, they are there is also thermal vibrations 
so the ions will uh, exhibit thermal vibrations and the quantized form of thermal vibration is called phonon so this phonon scattering increases with tem temperature so after some times this distribution uh, this uh, there will be this disturbed distribution relax back to original uh, original distributions so that is uh, this this is based on a relaxation model so if we take a relaxation time tau uh, which is called the characteristic time in which the drifting electron relax back to equilibrium state this can be mathematically represented like this formula that is d derivative of uh, drift velocity is equal to minus v d by tau so this will give the uh, drift velocity which decreases exponentially with time uh, we can write this formula so that there is a relaxation time which is called the characteristic time in which the drifted electrons relax back to an equilibrium state so for t equal to tau the velocity of the uh, directional motion decreases by 1 by e of its initial value so that is how we define the relaxation time there is also uh, another term called mean free path so the electron in metal moves along straight line until it collides with lattice imperfect imperfections so the average distance that electrons travel between two successive collision is called the mean free path so there are two processes uh, we need to consider these two processes one is uh, because of the drifted electrons uh, under the influence of electric field also there is uh, scattering due to scattering this drifted electron will be relaxed back to its equilibrium position so this uh, we uh, in the newton's law of motion we had to consider this additional time so that we can write the steady state equations that is this dvd by dt is equal to zero so that gives the steady state value of velocity from this formula we can get minus e e tau by m consider there are n n is the electron concentration so that the steady state current density j is given by n into charge into drift velocity so that is minus ne vd so on substituting this vd here you will get ne square tau by m into electric field so in general j can be expressed as sigma into e that is called the ohm's law so uh, we can write uh, from this formula we can write the expression for current uh, the electrical uh, uh, electrical conductivity that is sigma is equal to n e square tau by m so this is the root expression for electrical conductivity from this formula we can say that having a concentration n of conduction electrons each carrying a charge e and mass m which are drifting under the influence of electric field getting scattered by various scattering agents and relax by characteristic time tau to equilibrium state so uh, the electrical conductivity can also uh, represented as n, in, n into e into mu where mu is called the mobility but which is actually the drift velocity per unit electric field vd is equal to mu into e uh, so that the mobility can be expressed as mu is equal to from that uh, previous expression we can write this is e tau by m we can also express the resistivity as 1 by sigma that is one by inverse of electrical conductivity that is given by m by n e square tau so the electrical conductivity depends on number of carriers per unit volume that is the concentration n as well as the mobility the dependence of these quantities on temperature determines the electrical properties for example in metal uh, the n concentration n is a constant but mu varies relatively slow with temperature but in the case of semiconductor 
on increasing temperature the charge the carrier concentration increases exponentially whereas the uh, in the case of insulators the exponential growth is happening for mobility mu in that case n is a constant so this uh, define the this uh, this expression basically define the electrical conductivity which is very well in agreement with experimental data although it is a classical formulation so based on this uh, you can work out these two problems i have given the answers here so if you have any difficulty please comment to this one so that i, I will explain to you how to do this So there is another uh, after this uh, we are going to Weidmann finds Lorentz law. So the electrons uh, we just learned that the electrons are responsible for the electrical conduction which is uh, which are also responsible for the transport of thermal energy. So this Weidmann finds law states that the ratio of electronic contribution of the thermal conductivity which is expressed as kappa e uh, to the electrical conductivity so the uh, basically the ratio of electronic contribution to the thermal conductivity and the electrical conductivity of a metal is proportional to its temperature so that is k by sigma is proportional to temperature and the proportionality constant can be represented as l which is called the lorentz number so basically this is this uh, uh, this uh, observational law is based on uh, Wiedemann and Franz who in uh, 1853 reported that the k by sigma that is the ratio of the thermal conductivity to electrical electrical conductivity has approximately same value for different metals at same temperature later on uh, Lawrence in 1872 find out the proportionality constant uh, that is L and this is the expression that is uh, pi square by 3 into k square by e square which is called the Lorentz number. So altogether this is called the Weidmann Franz Lorentz law. So the electrical uh, we we uh, we discussed about the electrical conductivity so the resistivity is actually the inverse of that so this is the expression for electrical resistivity that is m by n e square tau the electrical resistivity of any metal depends on two factors one is the lattice vibration that is the phonons uh, which is depending on the thermal excitation and there is uh, it is also depending on uh, any imperfections like impurities or any defects can be uh, grain boundaries so this can also uh, this can also cause the it can also increase the resistivity so basically the scattering by impurities is uh, which is actually uh, independent of temperature so the second function is independent of temperature whereas the scattering by phonon is purely on the uh, temperature dependent so we can basically uh, uh, connect this this one the resistivity of metal can be expressed as summation of these two terms the first one is due to phonons that is the thermal vibrations and the second one is uh, we can collectively call due to impurities so that is because due to the imperfection so the first time purely depending on the temperature and second time is independent of temperature. So this expressions that is uh, this uh, row uh, which is splitted into two terms. This rule it, uh, is, a, is actually another observational rule that is called the Matheson's rule. So we can express uh, this one into two terms. So at very low temperature, we can uh, there will be there will not be any thermal vibration. So we can uh, neglect uh, the time that is raw due to phonons, because uh, when temperature is very low, from this expression we can say that uh, 
this will be uh, tau will be the uh, relaxation time goes to infinity when there is no thermal vibrations it can uh, the relaxation time is very large it tends to infinity so that rho uh, res resistivity from this expression will tends to zero so there is no contribution from the phonon so it can be uh, purely based on the imperfections as temp so this is uh, depicted in this graph as temperature increases the scattering by phonon becomes more effective so that the second time that is rho ph that is due to phonons goes on increasing so that that time we can neglect the uh, the contribution from impurities so the rho is uh, is approximately equal to rho ph so uh, which is increasing linearly with temperature so this is uh, this is how the effect of temperature on resistivity so is kind of an empirical observation which can be used for qualitative understanding of of the contribution from different scattering mechanism but this rule is not always valid so we should know that this matheson's rules is al always not valid for example in the case of when the relaxation time depending on wave vector we cannot apply this rule Thank you.